If you're new to online teaching, you may have some very basic questions, such as, how should I structure my course? How do I make sure students know what they are supposed to be doing? How do I make it engaging? Good questions, so let's ask them. How should I structure my course? I tease about being an organization freak in my online class. I want absolutely everything to be easily accessible. So my course is structured into units with sessions, and each session is about a week long. And in any given week, a student knows that they need to complete one session in order to stay on track. Our courses are structured by units. Each unit is aligned with the Georgia Performance Standards, where each unit is set up where they have an introductory paragraph, essential questions, key terms, as well as module minutes to provide students with the introduction to each course. I always begin with an activation, something to capture the student's interest. Usually it's some interesting fact about something we're gonna learn and a picture or video to go along with it. After that is sort of a lesson content, right? It's, it's the simulations, it's a textbook reading perhaps, it's a website that's directly related to the content. And at the end of every lesson is some form of assessment to sort of cycle back so the students know what they're responsible for learning at the end of the lesson. We also have check your knowledge quizzes, which gives us another just check-in for where the students are. The next is the completion assignments or activities. These are just the next level of Bloom's Taxonomy where you're starting to explore the material a little bit more. These are typically interactive assignments. And then we have mastery assignments, which is your highest level of Bloom's Taxonomy where students are creating and applying and really engaging with the material. How do I make sure my students know what to do and what is expected of them? There are a couple of different things I do to make sure that students understand the requirements of my course. One is front-loading, so they're getting it in the syllabus, they're seeing it in my course calendar, they're seeing it in the announcements. But then they're also getting those requirements from communications with me, so they're getting text messages and emails and phone calls clarifying exactly what they should be working on. Before a student takes a course for the North Carolina Virtual Public School, they're going to go through a unit called the Getting Started Unit. And this is going to associate them or introduce them to all the different things that they might encounter. For instance, the communication, the ways that we communicate with them through messaging or the instant messenger, uh, Blackboard instant messenger, or texting and how we're going to do that. And if there's any kind of time frame like office hours that we might use. How do I make my course as stimulating and engaging as possible? There's such a wealth of resources that are out there that are free for people to pull from. Whether it's the Khan Academy videos or Brightstorm, these teachers who are really engaging, talking to kids, explaining a concept. I can get the latest and greatest free resources that are out there on the web, these rich media resources, and put them right into my online class for my students to experience. I employ rich media in my online classes by embedding YouTube videos and my news announcements. I embed virtual simulations and Java applets for my students to use to reinforce the content. And I also use Vokies, which is a web software that is used to display the information by using voice recognition program. We also do animations, and those could be um, like cartoony animations or something like Animoto, which is a slideshow. Uh, we also do Blogster, and, and when I say we also do, the students and I are doing. So we're presenting the material in this way and then we're also asking the students to create material in this way. As much as possible, I want to give students in my classroom an experience that they could not possibly have in a face-to-face -face classroom and that means I'm pulling in a variety of videos and podcasts and some of the amazing resources that are out there to make their learning richer and deeper. To learn more about INACOL National Standards for Quality Online Teaching, visit us on the web at www.inacol.org.